If you're looking for an outlining application that syncs across all of your devices, then look no further because I've got the solution. It's an application called Cloud Outliner. And so that's what I'm going to be digging into in this video. Um, now, it is available as a download either on the Mac or separately on iOS. Um, but there is a way that you can get it as part of the setup subscription. So I'll be talking about that in a moment as well. But let's first of all just have a quick look at what the interface looks like because uh, it's something that I really like. It's got this really nice sort of lightweight feel to it. Uh, so not too bloated with too many features. It's got just the things that personally I need from an outlining application. So I'm really pleased that I found out that this was available on setup. But as I say, I'll be talking about the different ways you can get it in a uh, little while. So uh, first of all, let's have a look at the app itself. So here it is, uh, just a simple sort of two pane design. So you might not be able to see that, but there's a little pane down the middle there. There we go. So we've got a little sidebar uh, and some icons across the top and then a couple of icons across the bottom. But what can we do with this? Well, basically we can use it to create outlines. Uh, maybe I need to just uh, talk about exactly what those are. So I'm gonna create a new uh, outline here like this uh, and I'm gonna give this a name outline one <laughs> very simple uh, and then what we can do is we can create basically a list so uh, let's think about this as maybe they might be sections in a book they might be uh, sections in a video who knows in fact let's use that as an example shall we so let's say that this is going to be my outline for a live stream or something like that uh, and I want to split up the different sections so I might want to have my introduction first uh, and then on the next line I might want to have uh, some content about uh, let's say a YouTube channel tweaks which is uh, something that I will be doing on my live stream uh, on this uh, this Friday evening in fact well Saturday morning for me but Friday evening for those of you in the US uh, so check the channel for that uh, so maybe I want to talk about my YouTube tweaks and uh, in this case uh, I might then want to uh, sort of indent this a little bit I'm just going to just do this and then I'll explain a little bit more about uh, what I'm doing so if I just indent this so what things have I changed on my YouTube channel uh, I've changed my thumbnails I've changed my uh, uh, intros and I've also changed my end screens. There we go. So that is just a little, uh, uh, of, of course, I can't type and talk at the same time. <laughs> so I've got the little spelling mistakes in there. Um, but that is basically what outlines are. They allow you to just create these uh, sort of quick uh, overviews of something that you're doing it could be a project plan as well and then if I just sort of put that back in so what else might want to talk about I might just want to have some uh, general chat and then I might want to have a guest comes on so uh, so let's say that that is the rough outline for my uh, my live stream uh, coming up um, then you might want to add some notes in and things like this so uh, for the general chat maybe I've got uh, something that I want to have in here so uh, uh, ask people to put a Q colon <laughs> in front of their question just so that I don't forget that. <laughs> so uh, that is basically how you can create outlines and these can be as uh, simple or as complicated as you want. Uh, now I do have a task manager that I use all of the time for pretty much everything that I do so that is OmniFocus uh, and that has this same sort of hierarchical structure um, but that's a lot more of a full featured uh, getting things done by David Allen style of uh, task planner so that is what I use for all my general uh, task planning um, but for just creating outlines of things or for just little quick ad hoc project projects uh, it's just as easy to just uh, fire up something like this uh, and then get an overview or an outline of uh, what it is I'm trying to do. So that is what essentially an outlining app is. So I'm going to go into uh, more detail of uh, the functions of this because, uh, as I say, it's quite lightweight, but it's just got everything that I uh, needed in it. So I'll be talking about it on the uh, Mac OS and also on iOS as well. But let me just jump over and tell you uh, where you can get it from. So uh, it is available on the uh, iOS uh, and Mac App Store. So on the Mac App Store, it is $9.99. Uh, and, and that's in dollars and then on the iOS app store it is um, $2.99 for the pro version there is a lighter weight uh version that you can try out as well um, but these ones have all of the features and so these are the features that I'm going to be covering in this video today however if you are a user of setup you can also get it as part of setup and if you don't know what setup is I should probably just mention <laughs> setup is a subscription service for uh, apps basically where you pay one monthly fee of $9.99 and you get access to over 200 great sort of utility style apps just like this one that I'm talking about um, it sits on your Mac as uh, basically like a secondary app store if you like and you can just go and choose the ones that you want to install. Uh, you can even 
uninstall them from within the setup app as well uh, and it's great for those little jobs that you need to do where perhaps you wouldn't have gone out and bought the application but because it's part of setup you can just download it use it to do its thing and then even offload it if you if you don't want to use it going forward and it's also a great way to try out new apps as well uh, i use loads of these setup apps just in my day-to-day -day productivity and it really has been a great sort of addition to my uh, whole workflow really now i have got an affiliate link and this is uh, take one tech.io slash setup and the way that the affiliate program works is you can go and get a free trial just like everybody else i think it's a week-long trial where you can try out all of the different apps um but then if you have signed up with my uh affiliate link then basically once you do go to sign up to set up you'll get a free month and I'll get a free month so uh, we both win <laughs> so that is just how the affiliate system works for them so uh, that is the place that I would recommend getting it from uh, and so yeah you can definitely go and get your uh, free month of setup with my affiliate link which I'll leave just down here just in case you forget and of course I will be linking it to it in the description as well and to the regular place you can buy them from the app store just in case you're not interested in setup <laughs> but let's have a little look at uh, the different features that we've got in here so uh, i did just sort of fire through this quite quickly just to uh, sort of demonstrate but let's uh, come into here and let's say we wanted to uh, add in i'm clicking in my little preview window i should be clicking in the app that would always help wouldn't it uh, so when you are um in the uh, outliner like this uh, it works really well with keyboard shortcuts so you can just basically fire through this uh, using your keyboard um, but I'll show you the buttons just uh, to start with. So basically the way this works is we've got this little uh, plus icon here, uh, which is a way to add a new little action. You can also do this by pressing return. Um, so if I do that, it's going to add a new task or new entry underneath i'll talk about different list styles in a moment as well but that's just added a new uh, a new task or, or entry down below uh, you'll notice that these all do have uh, check marks on them so you can just sort of check these off so if it was something that you were going through uh, on your you know whatever it is you were doing in this case on my live stream i could be going through and checking these off and you'll notice that where you've got a parent which is the top one and these are kind of like underneath that particular parent so these are the the child uh, nodes or child entries uh, you can see that if any one of those is unchecked then this one up here remains uh, uh, sort of still not completely completed <laughs> completely completed still not completed if I click on this one though you'll notice how it changes to uh, checked so that's how you would do that with a sort of hierarchy you can also expand those in and out like this um, so just adding that um, that little plus icon adds the new one beneath um, but if I wanted to add one of those child nodes um, then I could do that in a number of ways I could either take this one that I've already created so let's just say that I do want to do that this is guest one uh, say I'm going to list my guests and have some notes associated with them uh, then you can either use this one to sort of tab that back and forth so you're just sort of moving it in and out you can see what's happening there um, or if I wanted to uh, do it from here I could come down here and uh, instead of pressing the plus uh, with the sort of down arrow uh, which is a new row uh, I could click this one and add a child row uh, like that and you can see that it's just added that one directly underneath it so let's call this one guest two uh, you can then just sort of drag these around so if I want to add the uh, guest one above guest two like that you can do it that way um, and then if I wanted to go back to uh, just a completely new uh, sort of new row uh, not a child row uh, then I could use this key here to uh, add a new, uh, they call it an art row, <laughs> which is sort of one up from it. Um, so uh, that's the way that you can do that. There is obviously keyboard shortcuts for all of these. So shift return is for the new child and uh, command shift return goes back to that uh, top level of the hierarchy like that uh, you can also move things up and down uh, using this button here uh, and move them back down again but as I say you can just sort of drag and drop these as well so that is basically how you add the different elements to it now uh, in terms of the actual uh, outline itself you've got this uh, uh, you might have many different outlines so you can just keep adding new outlines to here as you wish um, and then you might also want to organize these so there is a folder command as well so that you can add a folder and then you can just sort of drag these into a specific folder as well so if you wanted to collect these together uh, maybe I'm going to do a list of all of my live streams and just keep all those together in one folder of my uh, live stream outlines which I'm going to try and be a bit more planned about <laughs> uh, so there is uh, there is that now when you are in a particular outline uh, you do have some options uh, so for example the format uh, you can change things like font text and uh, text color and things like that you can also do that from up here as well 
Uh, now in the view menu, you can also change this numbering style. So uh, at the moment I've got the checkboxes, so I might want to hide the checkboxes. If this isn't gonna be something that I'm gonna ch uh, check off as such, it's just going to be a list, um, then you might not want the checkboxes. So you can see how you can just take those off. Uh, and if I come back into view, then I might want to change the numbering style. So have some sort of numbering uh, like this, or another numbering style would be like this. These are just sort of typical ways that you might number uh, these sort of hierarchical lists. Uh, and by the way, you can just keep adding in more uh, sort of child levels to this. So you can see how that sort of propagates that numbering system. Um, and then let me just have a look at one other thing that you can do in here. Uh, so then you can also filter if you have got those checkboxes enabled. So let me just show the checkboxes again. Uh, and let's say we've got some of those checked already like this. Uh, that's probably a bad one because there's only one thing in there. Uh, but then in the view, you can also uh, filter by showing only the checked rows so or unchecked rows. So if you were doing something as a list and you were using this as some sort of lightweight task manager, uh, then showing only unchecked rows would just show you everything uh, that you've got left to do rather than all the ones that have been completed. And you can do the opposite. You can show only the completed ones if you want to see how much you've actually completed. <laughs> so uh, those are the different uh, view options that you've got. Now, these things can be set up. So if you have a specific way that you use these uh, sorts of things, so you are always creating lists or always creating checklists, you can change the default that you have for your checklist. So uh, this one, you can see how I've changed it. If I go into this new outline here, uh, then this will be of the just the standard format. So you can see that we've lost the uh, the numbering there. Um, but if you want to change this, you can easily do that. If you just go into the cloud outliner menu in the menu bar, click on the preferences, then we've got some standard things here. Uh, there is, by the way, a, di a dark and light theme. It's a default to dark because I use dark on my system so it's just defaulted to that but there is a light theme if you are one of those who likes uh, glaring white <laughs> application windows um, and then you can also see it's got the uh, modification date of the particular file here of the particular outline rather uh, so you can toggle that either on or off so you can see how that's just toggling that on and off um, the synchronization method, so it does sync over iCloud, that is the default, um, but there is also an outline server, so if you want to sign up, you can uh, sign up to use their own server. Personally, I'm using iCloud, I find that that has been working fine. Uh, you can also sync it with Evernote if you are someone who is still hanging on using Evernote. <laughs> and then down below, you've also got the uh, default document settings. So this is where I was talking about the uh, different uh, ways that you can uh, have it just as a default. So we've got checkboxes shown as a default, but you might want to turn that one off um, or you might want to uh, show notes only for uh, selected rows or adjust the row heights to fix uh, text. And then you can show the different numbering style. Uh, so these are the different numbering styles we had before and change the text. So if we did want it to just default to this numbering style, um, then we can uh, uh, have have that. Uh, the, by the way, the show, I skipped over that, the show notes only for selected rows. Uh, what that does is if I just create a new note with this default, <laughs> I just totally skipped over that, I beg your pardon. Uh, that is where you've got notes that are visible. So if I create a new checklist now, uh, and I'll give you an example of that, uh, just call it example, <laughs> struggling for names here. So this is a uh, row and this is another row. There we go. Uh, now, if I was to add a note onto this, so this is the little note field here. You remember we did this before. Uh, this is a note. Um, what it's doing now is you can see how, uh, because I've got this row number three selected or row number one selected, I don't see the note that is associated with row number two. Whereas if I click on row number two now, you can see that the note appears. However, the behavior that I had before, if I uh, just take off all of those filters, uh, the one here that behavior that I had before was that you could always see the note. So if as I click through these, uh, you can always see that note associated with that particular row. So that is what that uh, setting was. Apologies for just uh, totally glossing over that one. <laughs> uh, and then there is also this shortcuts uh, section in the preferences as well. And you can see all of the different shortcuts and you can really just operate this totally with the um, with the keyboard. There's no need to uh, uh, be going up and pressing buttons in the menu bar. The, the whole way that these outliners can be uh, really quick to uh, work, or, uh, work through a, you know, building up a draft outline of something uh, or a 
project outline, task outline, or whatever it happens to be, is that you can sort of do it with your hands just totally on the keyboard. Um, I'm not even going to bother, believe it or not, setting up <laughs> Stream Deck shortcuts for this because the whole point is it's a text-based and keyboard shortcuts-based uh, application. So definitely recommend, I'm not going to go through them all, but definitely recommend uh, going through all of these different uh, commands here uh, and just checking out what the keyboard shortcuts they are because uh, you'll be quite productive, <laughs> quite productive <laughs> if you can uh, uh, master the keyboard shortcuts as with lots of text-based applications. So uh, that is just an overview of the different functions. That was quick, wasn't it? There isn't many functions in it, but it's a really good lightweight outliner. Uh, you can, by the way, just... Uh, as talking about keyboard shortcuts. So you can just navigate with your keys forwards and backwards, uh, up and down with the arrow keys. Tab will take you over to your different uh, 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 outlines in the sidebar so you can navigate between those. Uh, so as I say, yeah, you can just sort of fly around it with just your hands on the keyboard. But let's have a little look, shall we, at the uh, iOS app and uh, we'll have a look at it on the, uh, the iPad. And the thing about this is it does sync. Now, uh, it's not an instantaneous sync necessarily. It does sync periodically, um, but uh, very, very quickly, I should add. But if you do just want to force the sync, uh, then you can always come down to this little button just down at the bottom here, uh, and you can uh, click on that one, and it will just force that uh, syncing to happen. So let's have a little look now over on the iPad because... Uh, all of our notes now that I've just created in the on the Mac have actually uh, synced. So there they are all on the uh, uh, on the iPad. And if I just come over to my iPad and get my little mouse up on my iPad, uh, you can see that we have actually got all of those things. So there are the things that I've just created. Um, there are um, some not keyboard shortcuts, but uh, gestures that you can use on this. Uh, so if you want to just move things around, you can literally just swipe things forwards and backwards to sort of slide them over to different levels in the hierarchy. Uh, so that would be the same as using those sort of indent commands that we had on the Mac, whereas here it's just literally the swipe of a finger. Uh, same goes for the uh, sidebar, so you can just sort of swipe things in and out of folders, or you can move them up and down uh, just by dragging them he says, as it's uh, not to quite dragging it. Oh, I'll tell you why it is. I've got to click on this little button here. This is the difference. Click on that button to organize. Uh, and then now I can just sort of drag things in and out uh, and slide them where I want them. Or you can just sort of delete them from there as well. I click on done. Uh, you do obviously have the uh, the keys here to do it manually. Uh, but one thing is as well, all of the keyboard shortcuts, if you are using a keyboard uh, with your iPad, then all of the keyboard shortcuts from the Mac do also work on the iPad, which is absolutely essential in my view, because once you get the muscle memory, you just want things to work exactly the same across all devices. So really pleased to see that they've built in all of those keyboard shortcuts. So when you're using a keyboard with uh, the iPad, it will just work seamlessly and you'll You'll be right at home with it. Incidentally, if you are looking for a keyboard for your iPad uh, and you like to travel light, uh, then I can highly recommend uh, this folding keyboard. It is, in my mind, the best folding keyboard. Uh, and the reason why it's the best is because when you open it out, it does actually turn into a completely full-size uh, keyboard. And I did a video all about this, so I'll leave a link to that up in the top corner. But uh, yeah, best keyboard, folding keyboard, on the market in my in my estimation so uh, that is basically the uh, what it looks like on uh the uh, iPad, uh, but you can also get it on uh, iOS as well on the iPhone. So that is a sort of more lightweight version, uh, but still has all of the same functionality. And once again, those keyboard shortcuts do work. So uh, that's all for this video. If you found this useful, then definitely go and hit the like and subscribe button. And if it's really useful, then you can always uh, head over to buy me a coffee and support the channel on a one off or ongoing basis over there as well. Uh, I'll leave a link to some more of the setup videos that I've done over on the left hand side. I'm a bit low down there, aren't I? <laughs> so until the next video, have a great day. While I go and adjust my camera settings for this scene.